We are waiting for the moderator. Valeri, can we start now? Yes, Dr. Wen, you can start this session. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll Thank start you. the second and second plenary talk. Uh, Dr. Jinjun San will give this talk. Uh, I give the brief brief CV of brief biography of Jinjun San. And he received PhD in 2002 from from Harbin Institute of Technology China. And he joined York University, Canada in 2006 and uh, promoted to full professor in 2016. From 2018, he was appoint, appointed as the chair of the Department of Earth and Space Science and Engineering. And he got five million, from about five million Canada dollars from, from government and from industry. He had published almost 200 papers. And he's uh, associated with, uh, I think, several international journal, I, I think two of the very, very, very good in, uh, journal, is, one is IEEE transaction on industrial electricals, another one is uh, IEEE trans, uh, transaction on mechatronics. Okay, uh, I think, uh, can you start your talk? Yeah, so can you see my screen? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay, great. Uh, thanks Ben for you, uh, nice introduction. Again, so my name is uh, Jin Jun Shan from uh, uh, York University in Canada. Uh, today, I'm going to <coughs> present our recent work on adaptive game theoretical decision making for autonomous driving vehicles. So, <coughs> so the autonomous driving vehicles are associated with a variety of uh, uh, positive societal impacts such as a uh, safer transportation system and the low, low cost of transportation. So it is estimated that the direct societal value uh, that will be created uh, uh, by 2025 uh, for uh, autonomous driving vehicles uh, will be around 0 0.2 to 1.9 uh, trillion dollars annually. And also researchers uh, focus that by 2025, uh, we will see approximately 8 million autonomous or semi-autonomous uh, vehicles on the road. Uh, so in terms of research, there has been uh, extensive research in various uh, fields of uh, autonomous driving. So in the near to medium term, uh, autonomous driving vehicles will operate in traffic uh, scenarios together with the human drive vehicles we call as HDVs, um, where interactions between autonomous driving vehicles and human driving vehicles will constantly occur. So, so this slide uh, basically shows the levels of uh, auto, uh, autonomous driving. Uh, so basically the Society of uh, Automotive Engineers, SAE, uh, defines six levels of driving uh, automation ranging from zero, which is the manual, uh, manual driving, and uh, six, uh, five actually, which is a fully automation. So each level uh, represents a different level of intelligence at present. Most of the uh, self driving cars uh, belong to level one and the level two. You can see Tesla and Cadillac. Uh, so basically level zero, as we said, this is manually uh, controlled. And uh, uh, so basically the human provides the dynamic driving task. Uh, so level one basically is the lowest level of automation. So the vehicle features a single uh, automated system uh, for driver assessment. For example, the cruise control uh, uh, we are using in our car uh, nowadays. And the level two basically is, uh, means uh, uh, advanced the driver's assistance system. And the level three uh, cars uh, have environmental detection capability and can make informed decisions for themselves. Uh, however, they still require human override if something happens. Uh, so level four basically uh, can operate uh, in self-driving mode, however, uh, until the legislation, legislation and the infrastructure evolves, uh, they can only do so within a limited area. So nowadays, if you see uh, the self-driving cars on the road, they can only do this uh, within a limited area. So from here, you can see high-level automation needs high intelligence. 
So to ch to achieve higher uh, intelligence, uh, self-driving cars uh, need to be able to deal with several uh, issues. Here are these the issues. One is the road complexity. Second one is the traffic dynamics and the behavior uh, randomly of a pedestrian. So these are the, uh, are the issues the self-driving car has to uh, face. So here, let's talk about the motivation of our, of our, our research. So it has been estimated that the autonomous driving vehicles need to be running for a uh, few million uh, miles without a fatality uh, to assure the same rate of uh, reliability as existing human drive vehicles. So there's no thought uh, that only uh, the road testing a uh, few million, uh, few hundred million actually, uh, miles uh, uh, is already costly and uh, energy consuming, uh, not to mention posing a threat to passengers. So this is a, a big challenge. And also the decision making in dynamic and uh, interactive uh, environment is challenging since autonomous driving vehicles involves dynamic environment and complex interse intersections uh, cannot be pre-programmed uh, with exhaustive, uh, exhaustive uh, rules to cover all the traffic scenarios. We can have some rules, but we cannot cover all the uh, scenarios. So currently for the different level of uh, autonomous driving, so uh, even for the level four autonomous driving uh, solutions tend to limit the interaction rather than embrace that. So therefore, uh, for the complex traffic scenarios, uh, to model the various driving uh, behaviors and to uh, test the decision-making algorithms in high-fidelity simulation uh, environment are of great significance to improve the safety of autonomous driving vehicles as well as uh, reduce their dependence on, on the road test. So this is the main uh, uh, motivation of uh, our research. So now let's talk about the complex traffic scenario. <clears throat> In our research, <clears throat> we consider the urban uh, traffic environment with uh, intersections, uh, since they are more challenging for both human driving uh, vehicles and autonomous driving vehicles. For instance, uh, almost 40% of the traffic accidents in U.S. are intersection related. And according to the U.S. Federal uh, Highway Administration's report, almost 70% uh, of the fatalities uh, due to intersection related traffic accidents happened at uh, unsynchronized intersection. Now, unsynchronized, uh, unsynchronized uh, uh, intersections. So the interactions among world vehicles are complicated because uh, there's no centralized coordination. Um, and, uh, and if there's a well-coordinated uh, intersection, there's no problem. But, uh, but if there's no centralized coordination and there exists both elements of cooperation and competition during the process. Um, well, on the one hand, well, on the uh, one hand, all vehicles uh, we call this agent uh, must cooperate to avoid collision. On the other hand, competition is found in numerous uh, scenarios such as merging, uh, line changing, overtaking, and so on. So in this situation, the action of one vehicle depends on the actions and even the intentions of other vehicles and vice, uh, vice versa. So that have uh, reached dynamic, uh, dynamic behaviors. So the computational time grows exponentially uh, with the number of vehicles for finding the optimal policy. So this, why, uh, this, this, this problem is very, impo uh, very uh, uh, critical and uh, very challenging. Uh, and, uh, and we really need to find some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, we really need to find some solution to this problem. So now let's uh, talk about the, the methodology we are going to use in our work. So basically, uh, so in, in our work, and uh, we choose to use uh, the combination of uh, deep reinforcement learning and the game theory to model the different human uh, driving behaviors in uncontrolled uh, intersection scenarios. Uh, so our contribution here include uh, first one is to, to develop a realistic simulator using gazebo. I think if you're working on robotics, you know gazebo has been used in robotics area. And, uh, uh, and uh, the, the simulation we developed will allow us uh, for a realistic multi-vehicle simulation with the various sensors and, uh, and, uh, and uses sensors data as input of the neural network for training 
in the simulator. And uh, we also use game theory. Uh, once we use game theory, our trained model in each phase uh, represents the different human driving behaviors. Uh, so we, we, we can define the level K theory. So basically level one being the cautious drivers and level two being uh, aggressive drivers. And finally, and the trained model uh, uh, will be uh, loaded to the car-like robot to evaluate the performance. So basically, this is the methodology uh, in our uh, in our work. <clears throat> so now the question is, uh, since we are going to use the reinforcement learning and the game theory, so the question is, uh, why do we need to use reinforcement learning and the game theory? So basically, the reinforcement learning algorithm uh, provide us with a learning mechanism uh, similar to human learning. So where we eventually learn how to do things well uh, through trial and error. The feedback from the environment can help us uh, know if the way we are doing is correct. It's basically, this is the reinforcement learning. Uh, the game theory uh, is the mathematical models. Uh, it's mathematical model of uh, strategic uh, interaction among the rational decision makers. So it can be used to study uh, the strategic uh, reasoning and to model the behavior of the interacting vehicles. So we can use a game theory to model uh, the behavior of a different uh, of, uh, of uh, vehicles. So one, one of the challenging problem, uh, as we know, using game theory is that the computational demand becomes increasingly uh, heavier for a large number of the interacting uh, vehicles. But machine learning techniques can move the computation offline and uh, achieve the decision rules for online use. So basically we use the machine learning to do the offline training and then we apply those ones uh, for online uh, use. So this is a combination of the reinforcement learning and the, and the game theory. <clears throat> so now let's talk about the, the theory. So basically a decision making process uh, involving uh, multiple agents uh, can be modeled through a, 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 a stochastic game uh, or the Markov game. So as we know, the, the conventional re reinforcement learning algorithm requires the process to be Markov for convergency guarantees. So here we define the Markov game or stochastic game as the follows, as a tuple. So this the N is the number of agents uh, because we consider the multi-agent uh, cases. So N is greater than or equal to two. And S basically is the set of the environmental states shared by all the agents. And the P is, uh, <clears throat> so P here is, uh, uh, is uh, P here is a state transition uh, probability. And R here is the, the reward function that return a, a, a value uh, to the ice agent for a transition from ice A to ice prime. And, uh, and finally, gamma is the discount factor that represents the value of time. So basically, this is the tuple which defines the stochastic uh, uh, game. Okay, so the, this slide basically shows the end-to-end -end game for the self-driving cars at uncontrolled uh, intersection. So here you can see this is the, oh. <clears throat> so basically this is a uh, 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 diagram shows the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, process. So first, uh, the 2D LiDAR uh, point cloud data and the car state uh, will be uh, extracted through the uh, long and short-term memory network, LSPM. Uh, and so basically this to generate the observation information and which will be sent to the uh, decision-making algorithm. This is the uh, deep co-learning algorithm. Uh, so yeah, so this will generate the speed command for the self-driving cars. So here, uh, uh, just for information, uh, because we consider the, the uh, uh, intersection, okay, where are the intersection? And each car basically has the three paths, going straight and the turning left and the turning right. So that means because we have four cars, that means in total there are 12 um, passes. <clears throat> so for 12 passes, and we also, we use the, the pure pursuit controller to calculate the st uh, steering command for each car. So that is uh, uh, the end-to-end the -end, uh, uh, process. So in this work, uh, we proposed uh, we proposed an improved uh, DQN uh, algorithm uh, uh, by combining the advantages of the different uh, uh, supplements of the of the 
a TQM. One is a traditional TQM, one is a double TQM, and the during TQM, and the prioritized uh, experience uh, replay algorithm. So we call this, we call it as a D3QM PR, and the, which will be discussed later on. And also, as we know, uh, the LiDAR is one of the most important sensors used in the self-driving car uh, because its ability to adapt to uh, different uh, lighting conditions uh, and the robust to the environment. So here, uh, in order to uh, process the LiDAR data, and uh, we use the long and uh, short-term uh, memory network. Uh, uh, so, so, so we use this network to deal with the uh, LiDAR data. So uh, in our research, and the car, <coughs> the self-driving cars, uh, make a decision based on the history of the observation rather than the current observation only. So we, we, we consider the history of the observation and then we make a decision based on that. So uh, the, 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 here, the, this figure basically shows the simulation and the experimental platform we use in our research. So as we said, we use the gazebo to, uh, to uh, develop the uh, simulation environment, which is shown here, you can see in the middle. And on the uh, on the left, basically this is the uh, lidar point cloud information you can see, and uh, and the the last figure basically is the exper experimental system here at the York University we use in our research to 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 do some uh, decision making uh, testing. So our experimental system uh, used uh, is uh, <clears throat> the Quantus uh, self driving car research studio, uh, which consists of uh, uh, six Q uh, cars. Now you can see on the on the photo we, we, uh, we actually, in this work, and we we only use the four cars, but we have six cars that we can do a more advanced uh, testing. And each Q car is powered with a Jetson uh, supercomputer and a wide range of uh, uh, sensors. So here are the training and the testing environment for our research. And uh, yeah, so next one is uh, the technical requirement. So in our research, and uh, we choose the on synchronized intersection with the multiple uh, vehicles. That is because it's much more complex than other traffic scenarios. So each vehicle uh, chooses to enter the intersection area and uh, constantly interact with the surrounding uh, cars uh, and uh, to safely and efficiently cross the intersection. So all the drivers make a strategic decisions simultaneously. Uh, so that is, uh, our uh, uh, contribution and the novelty. Uh, so, so our approach uh, here, uh, the, the, the approach of the proposal here uh, 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 relates solely on the vehicle sensors uh, without assuming any coordination, the communication, or shared control uh, with the uh, surround, uh, surrounding car. So basically each car will make their own decision based on the sensor on the car. So this is uh, uh, our work. <clears throat> So next one, actually this slide basically shows the uh, LSTM. So this is the long short term network because as we said, the uh, long short term memory network is used to process the LiDAR point claw uh, information. So it has uh, the form of uh, a chain of uh, repeating modules. You can see this AA and this is the repeat, repeating uh, modules. Uh, and uh, and uh, here uh, the second figure shows the details of uh, of this uh, this module. Now you can see uh, this is uh, uh, the the uh, yeah basically this shows different uh, comp com uh, components of this module. Basically, it has a cell state and it has a forget gate. Basically, this is to decide what information we are going to throw away. That's why we call the forget gate uh, from the cell state. And also uh, uh, input gate, which is to decide what new information uh, we are going to store in the cell stage. And also we have a combination and the update. And finally, uh, we need to decide uh, what we are going to output. So this is the output gate. So that is uh, uh, LSTM, long and short term um, uh, memory network uh, used in our, in our research. So next one is talk, uh, I'm going to talk about the the D3 QN uh, the PER algorithm. So as we said, so we have uh, uh, improved uh, uh, DQN algorithm used in our our research. So basically, uh, so we can buy uh, the traditional DQN, the double DQN, and the during DQN, and the prioritized experience uh, replay algorithm. So that's why we call this as the uh, D3 QN 
uh, PR. So basically, the training process of a neural network can be understood as optimizing the loss function. So here is the oh, here is the loss function, and the loss function refers to the deviation between the output and uh, uh, the new uh, the the network uh, the output of the network and the label. So which is uh, here QSA. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this is DQS. So next, I'm going to talk uh, about each uh, 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 let's say supplement of the DQS. Uh, however, those are very standard uh, uh, DQN, and I'm not going to uh, give the details, but just to tell you what each block, uh, what what, uh, what each one will 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 do. So basically, the double DQN, this is the double DQN which uh, uh, handle the problem of the overestimation of the Q value. Uh, so so here uh, shows the reasons behind uh, behind the overestimation. So the idea basically is at the at the beginning of the training, and we don't know uh, enough. We don't have enough information about the best action to take. This is this is the reason why we need to do the the training. So therefore, taking the maximum Q value uh, as the best action uh, to take can lead to the false positive. So if non-optimal actions are readily given a high Q value, which you choose as action. Uh, then the learning will be complicated. So I think that uh, so then the double uh, DQ is used to uh, handle the overestimation uh, problem of the Q value. So here uh, actually the solution to uh, by using the DQ to solve the overestimation uh, is this. So basically, when we calculate the Q value uh, Q target, and we use the two networks to decouple the action selection from the target Q value generation. So first, we use the DQ network to select uh, what is the best action to take for the next state. Uh, state. And second one, we use the target network to calculate the uh, the target Q value of taking that action at the next state. So that is we have two uh, networks. So yeah, so basically the double DQ helps us to uh, help us reduce the overestimation of the Q values and help us to train faster and have more stable learning. So this is the purpose of the DQM. So next one is the, the, the during DQM. Basically, uh, during DQM uh, is the, to split the Q value into advantageous function and the value function. Here you can see V is the, the, the value of state, and A is the advantage of the taking that action uh, at that stage. So actually, we can see the value of the state and the advantage of, uh, the advantage of uh, action uh, will be separated. Uh, so, so once we step that, and once we got the the, the uh, yeah, once we step that, and by the end, and we we need to use the during DQ, uh, Q network to uh, uh with, with with the spatial aggregation layer to get an estimate of the Q S A. So because that is something we need for our training. So that is uh, during DQ N, and the next one is uh, prioritized uh, uh, DQ N. So basically, the idea of a prioritized experience. Uh, we play the PR is that some uh, experience uh, may be more important than others for our training, but might occur less frequently. Uh, so we want to consider priority experience where it, there is a big difference between our prediction and the TD target. Uh, since it means that we have a lot to learn about. So that is the priority. priority. We have to take the priority sample. Uh, so here, the st stochastic uh, uh, prioritization uh, was introduced to uh, generate the probability of being chosen for a replay. Uh, so, so, so this is a prioritized uh, DQM. Uh, so, so uh, here uh, we talk about the the theory and also the different uh, supplements of the DQM. And uh, as we said, we combine the DQM to get the D3QM. Uh, PER algorithm, uh, which is the main uh, learning algorithm used in our in our project. So, uh, yeah. So, so basically, uh, so here is adaptive game the theoretical decision making, and uh, so so to generate basically to generate the agent with different levels of the reasoning for decision making, because this is something we need to make decision uh, when the cars uh, cross the intersection. Uh, so. So basically, we use the D3QM per 
as to uh, as a learning algorithm, and which will be combined with the level K reasoning approach. So this is a game theory. So in the proposed combined approach, uh, the predetermined the non uh, strategic level zero, and because we have level zero, level one, level zero. So the level zero is non strategic uh, policy is the uh, anchoring policy uh, from which all the level, high levels are derived using the D3Q and P, uh, PR. For example, in order to obtain, uh, yeah, by the way, so level zero is the minimal rationality. Uh, this is the non strategic uh, policy. And the level one is uh, the cautious driver, and the level two is the aggressive, aggressive driver. So, for example, if we want to obtain the level one policy, so then a, a traffic scenario is created where all the drivers are level zero agents except the, the ego vehicle. So that is something we need to train, uh, which is, uh, yeah, the ego vehicle will be, uh, will be trained to best respond to the level zero policy, then we get the level one. Similarly, level two, and we assume all the vehicles have a level one policy except for the ego vehicle for training, okay? So this is the base idea uh, of, uh, yeah, this is the basic idea of the uh, of of uh, adaptive uh, game theoretical decision making. So uh, this slide shows uh, this slide has two tables, and the table one is the training of the level K agent. So basically, table one shows the procedure for obtaining the level K policy through the proposed approach. That, let's say if you want to get a level K, basically the 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 the, the idea is that in order to get a level K, we assume all the agent except for the ego vehicle is the level k uh minus one uh policy okay and then we we, we got the level k so basically this table uh this is table one shows and the table two basically shows the training process of uh, adaptive agent okay so adaptive agent is not uh, a single policy it has the adaptive uh, policy and uh, but but the uh, the procedure will be the similar to the uh, to the training of the level k agent so, uh, so yeah, so this, uh, so that is uh, the the training uh, of uh, level K and uh, eight, uh, level K agent and also a tap adaptive agent. So as as we said, uh, uh, each car has a three path going straight and the turning left and turning right. So we need to uh, calculate uh, the the steering angle. So this slide shows the computation of the steering angle of the autonomous driving vehicles uh, using the pure pursuit controller. So actually the idea is very simple. Uh, let's say uh, the, the, basically the idea is that a reference point, we, which was the red line here, uh, can be placed on the path of, uh, on, the, on the path of a, a fixed distance ahead of the vehicle. And then the steering command needed to intersect with that point, with this point, uh, using the constant steering angle uh, of the vehicle. So basically you can see the red, red uh, dot on the car and the red dot here on the path. Then if we connect this and we can calculate the uh, steering angle, which is the alpha. So that is uh, to get the uh, pure, uh, th that is uh, the computation of the steering angle by using the pure pursuit controller. All right, so next is uh, a modeling scenario. And uh, uh, yeah, so basically this uh, uh, figures that shows the simulation and the uh, experimental platform, which we discussed before. And uh, we, again, so we got the simulator, uh, uh, we developed the simulator using the gazebo and uh, we can get, we can create a different uh, uh, traffic scenarios for simulation. And then we have the hardware in our lab and which we can uh, test those uh, decision-making uh, algorithm we developed. Okay, so that is, uh, so that is uh, uh, a simulation and uh, experimental uh, uh, setup. So uh, this table basically shows the action space and the reward function. So here we consider uh, for each car and we consider uh, five possible actions. Uh, so that is, uh, that those are maintain, accelerate, fast accelerate, brake, and hard brake. So actually if you look at here and uh, the, the unit uh, is the acceleration. So that means that uh, when we say maintain, that means the acceleration is zero. That means we maintain the constant speed. And uh, for accelerator and this acceleration and the fast acceleration and the brake and the hardware. So th those are the five action space. 
uh, uh, five possible actions uh, uh, that each uh, vehicle can undertake. And uh, the reward function, which, which is included in, uh, in, the, in this table too, so basically the reward function shows, uh, is, uh, the reward function is used to evaluate the performance of the Eagle vehicle, uh, which encourages Eagle vehicle to learn efficient human driving behaviors. And uh, a reward function uh, was designed to penalize the collisions or being in dangerous state. Yeah, of course, if it's a collision, and then we give it negative five. And if we have the penalty for, yeah, so if we have safe zone violation and the distance approaching, and we also give this uh, uh, a negative uh, reward function. And, uh, and of course, and the reward, uh, we will reward, reward the efficient behavior for example, if we reach the destina destination, we give two, and if we reach each checkpoint along the path, we give 0 0.1. Uh, okay, uh, here I should uh, say, uh, for each path, and I, I believe we uh, divided the path into 200 uh, uh, checkpoints, and, uh, and then we, we, can use, we use this in our simulation and also in our uh, experimental study. Okay, so uh, here this table shows the action space and also the reward function. All right, so uh, this table shows the uh, evaluation results uh, of our decision making uh, by combining the D3Q and, and uh, the game theory. So according to this game we, I just mentioned, so we, uh, we, we have successfully uh, changed the level one, level two, and also the adaptive driving strategy uh, respectively. So first, after obtaining the trained policy, and we first, because we, we know the level zero, level two, one, and level two, and, if, and uh, we first tested the two scenarios of ego vehicle being of level K, uh, and the opponent's vehicle will be level K minus one. Uh, so here K is one and two. So that means we have uh, IL one versus IL zero and IL two versus IL one. And also keep in mind here, we run each case with 1,000 episodes, okay? So that is the, uh, uh, the simulation. Uh, so actually, if you look at here, these two cases, the case one and the case two, and they all have more than 96% success rate. Uh, so which is very good. So uh, that, me that means the expectation of the level K theory uh, has been met, okay? So that is uh, the first step. And uh, then, the chain to level one policy and level two policy were tested on level K versus level K. So that means we have all level one or all level two uh, uh, scenario. And again, so we have 1,000 episodes for each case. So if you look at here, and uh, this is 94.9% and 85.8% for level two and level two. So I think they, they make sense uh, because this scenario have a uh, this, this scenario have a much lower success rate. That is because if you remember, level one means uh, cautious driver. So level one, if all cars have level one policy, uh, which will result in the deadlock uh, due to the conserv conservative driving behavior. However, if we have all level two uh, uh, policy, that means the aggressive drivers, all aggressive drivers, uh, so which uh, will often result in collision uh, due to the aggressive driving behavior. So that's why we have a uh, very low success rate compared to others. Uh, and, uh, and also uh, here for level two versus level zero, this also very low success rate. That's because again, so level two is uh, aggressive driver and L1 is, uh, oh, by the way, L1 is non strategic policy. That means that the car just go uh, a, a constant speed, no matter what happens. So that's why, yeah, so there'd be uh, low success rate. So finally, we tested the adaptive uh, policy in uh, 81 uh, scenarios because each car can have zero, one, two. So that means uh, three to the power four, we have 84 scenarios. Um, and also we have three other environments which consist of uh, one type of the level K model. So that is the uh, level zero, level one, and level two. And actually, if you look at the, the, the last one, this adaptive versus the mixed scenario, so we have Level one, level two in the in uh, in in uh, in the three cars, but we have the adaptive for the ego vehicle. So now you can see 
the success rate is 91, 90, uh, 98%. So, so basically, this shows uh, the adaptive policy was able to resolve the more complex scenario than both level one and level two policy and adapt to the complex environment. Uh, so here shows the, the adaptive case. Okay, so this is uh, just uh, the, uh, this, this shows the ev evaluation result in our uh, simulation. And uh, I believe this, also, uh, this is also the, the result of our hardware test. So, so next one is the hardware test. So to show the performance of the uh, the training model, we also uh, uh, actually first thing is uh, we uh, have the scenario and we have the training and then we apply to our uh, we, we use our uh, simulator uh, divided by by gazebo uh, to do the simulation and after that and we also uh, conduct the, the the hardware test in our lab. So to show the performance of the training model. And we select a fourth scenario uh, to show you here. So the fourth scenario is always four cars at the unsignalized four-way intersection. So now you can see this four-way intersection. And uh, we let four vehicles to be controlled by different level K policies. We have level one and level two. And uh, show how each traffic scenario evolves depending on the different combination of level K policies. Uh, yeah, so so here, uh, yeah, so you can see, uh, so in this case, and this is the case one, uh, so we can see we have uh, eagle vehicle as level one and the other vehicles are level two. Again, the cautious and the aggressive. Uh, so, and in this case, is the eagle vehicle going straight. So here, this shows that for, at a different time and the location of the eagle vehicle and, uh, and, uh, and uh, here, uh, uh, the, the figure here shows the, uh, the, the, the result of the past waypoint because as we said, for each pass, we, can, we, we separate it into 200 uh, waypoints, okay? And, uh, and, this shows, uh, the and this shows the, the time versus location of the, of the car. So, uh, yeah, so actually uh, we can see from this result, this level and level two, and uh, uh, the level one and the level two vehicles inter interact with each other and the conflict between them can be resolved. So that means all the vehicles can, uh, uh, can, can reach their destination. So that is expected because the level one vehicle, again, so it's cautious of the drivers, uh, which will yard the way of the right of way and, uh, and the level to the level two vehicles, uh, which represents the, the aggressive drivers, which will proceed, uh, uh, which will uh, proceed ahead because it's aggressive, okay? So this is the case one, and the next one is uh, another case, which is the uh, L1, L2, L2, and L1, okay? So uh, similarly, so this figure shows the basic car one and car four uh, controlled by level one policy uh, interact with the uh, car two and car three controlled by level two policy. And uh, car two and car three enter the collision area first because they are level two uh, vehicles, which are aggressive vehicles. And level one and level four uh, take deceleration action to wait them to pass at around three seconds, you can see here. So actually, if you look at it, uh, the result, you can see uh, those are car two and car three, and which uh, pass first, and then car one and car four will wait and, and pass. So that is the case two. And similarly, we can see this one, we have three cars with level one, and uh, one car as the le level two, that is uh, uh, car two. So now you can see uh, the, the red dot, this is the car to which we will arrive at, at the destination first. And in this case, the Eagle vehicle will turn left. So the last one is, uh, uh, is uh, level two, which is the Eagle vehicle, uh, and the three cars, uh, car two, uh, three, four, are all with uh, level one policy. And in this case, the Eagle vehicle turn, turning the right. Uh, so here you can see, yeah, uh, because, uh, yeah, this is the car one, which arrived at the destination first, because that is the uh, uh, IL2 uh, uh, policy. So these are the four cases I, I show you, and just to show you um, the simulation and also the, the hardware test uh, uh, to verify our theory. Uh, so finally, I can show you uh, 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 a video uh, for our work, and basically the summary of the of, of the simulation and the hardware test. 
So now you can see this is the scenario we, uh, we, we take uh, uh, for our uh, motivation or for our research. So this is shows the, the simulation. Uh, and you can see the 2D LiDAR to obtain uh, the observation of the environment. And here shows the uh, hardware test uh, workflow. And now you can see we have four cars. Uh, this, by the way, this is my lab. And uh, we have uh, car one to car four, the four vehicles. And we can see the, uh, the motion of that. And this one is the case for all cars go straight. And you can see we have level one for eco vehicle and the three are uh, all have the level two uh, policy. And this is a hardware test. So actually, uh, just for, for just now, you can see the level two vehicle arrive the destination first. Yeah, same thing here. And the car eagle vehicle, car four are all the level one vehicle. And this uh, this is the same thing here. This is a simulation, and this is a hardware test. So the Eagle vehicle will turn left, and it has the policy uh, level one. So yeah, so that's why it is cautious, and it will arrive at the destination uh, at the end. So actually, you can see the lidar is is uh, is uh, uh, operating to get the uh, the to to do the observation. All right. So uh, conclusions. So basically, uh, in this work and the way, uh, uh, so we proposed uh, to have the adaptive game theoretical decision making strategy. Uh, we uh, because we combine the reinforcement learning and uh, the game theory. Uh, so the inter interactions between the vehicles uh, are modeled with, uh, using the level key game theoretic framework. Uh, so this is uh, our uh, contribution. So both simulation and hardware testing results were reported and uh, uh, showed us that the vehicle interaction model expects the reasonable behavior expected in the traffic scenario. So uh, it also uh, uh, it was also shown that the adaptive model has uh, had a reasonably high rate of the success in resolving the traffic conflict, matching the expected uh, expected behavior of each reasoning uh, level. And also, the framework proposed uh, for modeling the multi-vehicle interactions can be used as a simulation tool for calibration, validation, and the verification of uh, autonomous driving system uh, in the future. Uh, of course, we, are, we we continue working in this area, and there's more ideas coming. And uh, uh, okay, so I think this concludes my my talk. And uh, if you have any question, I would like to answer those questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Jinjun. Is, yeah, it's the uh, exciting work. It's the uh, I think it's, it's it's a very hot very hot topic. It's uh, autopilot. Is uh, so if you have some question, and I, I think we have the fifteen minutes, we can discuss and we have some question. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I can answer the first question is, uh, Jin Jun, what's your opinion? Uh, now you said it's the uh, uh, autopilot is, is in level four. Waymo, Baidu is in level four now. Is it possible or how long we can arrive level five? Or we can never <laughs> arrive there? Well, okay. I think that's a very uh, good question. And uh, I, I also want to know the answer. But the thing is, uh, as I mentioned, so uh, in order to 
uh, in order for the for the autonomous driving vehicle to be uh, to be safely used uh, by us, I think uh, it 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 will need a, a very long. I mean, a lot of uh, how how to say. So I think we we, we definitely we need uh, um, I think uh, the, the data is uh, we need more than two uh, two hundred seventy five uh, million uh, miles test on, on the road testing. So I think uh, that is very time consuming and uh, energy consuming uh, because uh, because I think there's also something we need to consider because the find that let's say uh, I think uh, nowadays for the for the for the uh, self-driving cars, uh, even if we do the uh, on, on the road test, and we don't consider very complicated uh, uh, traffic scenario because actually, basically, the self-driving car will not work in this area, uh, in, in those uh, scenarios. I think uh, there's a long way to go. Uh, so this is the reason why uh, in my research, we try to do something like a decision making, and we consider some unsynchronized or uncontrolled uh, uh, traffic uh, scenarios, uh, which, uh, which may not happen very often in North America, but uh, it happens in, in the world in many other places. So if, if we want to do this, uh, to, if we want to use the self-driving car in our daily life, I think there's also, there, there's still a long way to go. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why I answer the question because I don't know how but, long it takes, uh, but it, it will take a long time. Yeah, but it's a long time, but you, are you sure in one day we can arrive at this level four, our vehicle is, Auto drive, is it possible? Uh, oh, um. I, I do, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, definitely one day it will. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, maybe maybe ten years ago or more than ten years ago, we cannot we cannot imagine the, the mm -hmm. self driving, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Driving has and. Uh, oh okay. Uh, yeah, I think there's, uh, I, I think one day it will come, but I don't know how long. But there okay. definitely are work to be done. So I guess uh, the, the, the thing is. Uh, uh, most of the, the hardware are already in place. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, LiDAR, which is a very important uh, 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 sensor to be used in self-driving car. And actually, in, 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 before, we have to use a very expensive LiDAR, uh, which is not good, right? Uh, but nowadays, you can, you can purchase something like a few hundred dollar LiDAR, and you can use that. I think that is also one change. Because, uh, uh, for example, for the for the uh, commercial car for the cars, we we are going to buy. Of course, the price is one consideration, right? And uh, and the industry and the company trying to lower the, the cost. But I think the the, the something like camera or lidar. I think they are all we all the, we all have the, the hardware, but the software and also the decision making those are still long way to go. I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question. Oh, you give some 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 comment is also. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Professor Jinjun, is 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 this part of uh, of some project to be implemented there in Toronto or in Canada? Is, sorry, uh, can you repeat your question? Is this part of of some project to be implemented there in Toronto? Oh yes. So actually, uh, uh, the 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 presentation I made today, so basically is. Uh, uh, is uh, a project uh, currently in my in my group. Okay. And also, we work with a local company and uh, to develop some uh, 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 some uh, decision making strategy for the South Korean car. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Go okay. ahead, Gerardo Sivas. Thank you, Wen. <laughs> Okay, uh, next question. Uh, uh, let me ask you a next question. Is, <clears throat> so you use uh, uh, game theorem for policy update and use this, uh, what we call the DN, DQN, no? DQN deep yeah. learning for value function. And uh, my question is, uh, for is it is it possible no both of part use a uh, neural network like uh, actor grid measure i think is the uh, but in your case you have some some benefit some some how to say advantage 
to use the uh, game theory or, or replace the the policy policy update replace this new network with game theory what was the benefit what's your advantage with the game theory in for the policy uh so okay so yes and actually in our uh product or in our uh, research and we combine the uh the the game theory and uh, <clears throat> And the the machine learning or the deep reinforcement learning. Uh, so actually, there's few uh, considerations. One is actually when we drive, right? And uh, even nowadays, uh, without the self driving car, even with the human driving car, and we can consider this as a game theory problem, right? For example, when you uh, cross the the, the let's say intersection, when we when we uh, reach the uh, intersection, and now you know we have the uh, basically, now we, we have to follow the rules, right? The, the traffic rules. For example, we have the stop sign, and then you have to stop. And, uh, and in, in Canada, uh, uh, we we say, okay, first come, first first go, right? And also we have if uh, and there's some policy about about the, how to cross the the intersection. Uh, so so, but the problem is uh, uh, the problem is uh, uh, we we won't be able to uh, predetermine all the uh, all the the rules for all the uh, traffic scenario. For example, if some uh, in second there's no stop sign, and what to do, right? And also we have to consider sometimes even we have the the the, the traffic rules, and the, some people they don't follow. So so I think that is something we we think okay that is uh, basically the, the problem is when we when you drive basically this is the uh, uh, cooperation and uh, competition. First thing is you have to cover it for them if we drive on the road and we have to cover each other because we don't want to cause any collision. Second one is the competition because uh, because let's say if we want to change the line and we have merge and we want to uh, uh, overtaking and, and basically this competition. So this is why we say, okay, basically this kind of uh, driving behavior can be described by the game theory. So this is why we use the game theory. And of, of course for the game theory, we use level K because we consider every driver will be different. So unfortunately, we won't be able to consider all the different level of drivers uh, for the, 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 the new driver, uh, more experienced driver, or cautious driver, or aggressive drivers. We cannot do that at this moment. We only can, we can, we only consider level, three levels, level zero, level one, level three, uh, level two. Of course, we are going to, uh, as time goes, uh, we, we, we plan to have uh, deep, more levels and we can, so that means this will be more complicated. Okay, and as I said, so if you use the game theory in this uh, traffic scenario, and if you have more vehicles involved, then the competition time is a big problem. And you won't be able to do the uh, online uh, 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 computing. So however, uh, that, that is why we have the re, uh, reinforcement learning because reinforcement learning can train this policy offline, and then we can use the result uh, for the online use. I think that is the main purpose to com com combine the game theory and, uh, and uh, deep reinforcement learning in, in this work. Okay, thank you. It's uh, <coughs> uh, next question. Uh, let me continue. In, in your video, I saw there are traffic light, but everybody <laughs> goes inside the intersection. What happened? Is this is normal or it's not normal? Uh, just give me, because give they, me. if they oh. have traffic light, you have stop sign, you should go inside the, the intersection one by one, no? But in okay, the video, yeah, I, you, I saw how everybody goes inside. <laughs> what happened in this case? It's possible. It's normal. I, I, I don't. You can see. Yeah. You mean you this, traffic, right? Yeah. You have traffic lights. You, you cannot go, go everywhere. No. It's some uh, well, I, they have traffic lights. No? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, definitely you're right. And uh, but actually, if you look at this uh, video, and uh, yeah, let, let's go from here. So yeah, actually, if you see here, right? And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think, so, so I, I think so, the, no. okay. Maybe in this case, I don't, I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, maybe in this case, the traffic light 
uh, does not work, oh, okay, right? Okay. And and and, yeah, and yeah. you know in, in North America, and if uh, uh, due to the power failure, and if traffic light does not work, and the people always treat the intersection as a, as a, as a stop sign, right? As a stop yeah. sign intersection, so mm -hmm. come first and, and go first, right? However, mm -hmm. uh, so I think that is. Uh, uh, video from uh, I think in, in China I think that 2012. 20, 20, uh, okay, either mm. the traffic light does not work and people don't follow the rule, or and I know because we are all from, coming from China and you know and in, in some areas in China and and there's no traffic light and there's no uh, uh, coordination. So I think this uh, this caused uh, the the problem. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so yeah, this this reason in this research and we consider. The intersection, uh, the uncontrolled intersection, or unsignalized uh, uh, sing, uh, uh, intersection. That means there's no traffic light, and and mm -hmm. then people just uh, and and then cars has to uh, follow some uh, uh, has to make a decision when to go and 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 yeah, basically when to when to go. I think that is depends on the uh, the, the 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 driving behavior of of each vehicle. Okay, thank you, and. Next question. Okay, if no, so we thank you again and uh, very good, good talk. And we see you next time. No, okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your invitation. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.